we went through three problems. Um, problem one was you were told that a test that is 99% uh, accurate reveals that you have a disease, should you be worried? Um, even though the disease is very rare in the population. And most of you were worried and today we will do the calculation or hopefully many of you did this calculation at home um, for this class. Problem two was um, this sort of game setting where there are, there are three doors, two of the doors have goats behind it and one door has a big prize and you pick door one the contestant opens door th uh, three, there's a goat, and then the contestant asks you, do you want to switch, yes or not? And most of you would switch as opposed to, to stick into your original choice. Today we will see how base rule predicts that that's the right thing to do uh, in probability. And we saw some cute examples of it. And then the other thing that we looked at was this um, problem of speech recognition, where even though it seems that it's easy to produce words, uh, sorry, to produce sounds given a set of words, um, it turns out to be very hard to do the opposite, um, to go from um, sounds to words. Well, likewise, uh, computer graphics has advanced to the point that with several rules, people can render very nice textures and so on. And if you go to, mo to the movies, you'll see that animation has progressed enormously. But the inverse process, that is going from the image to knowing what the image is about, turns out to be actually incredibly hard. All right, so we introduced base rule. And base rule, uh, whenever you deal with quantities where there is uncertainty, um, like there's uncertainty be mainly due to the fact that we don't see everything. Um, so we, you haven't seen tomorrow yet, so there will be uncertainty about what the weather is tomorrow. Um, you have no clue what's going on right now in Brisbane. So if I ask you what's the weather in Brisbane, there would be uncertainty as to what in Brisbane is. You probably would think it's hot, but uh, God knows, it's winter down there. Um, and so to deal with this lack of observability that brings in, uh, uncertainty to the world, um, we use probability and in particular Bayes rule, which is a direct consequence of the rule of conditioning, will allow us to go from the probability of B given A to the probability of A given B. So we'll be able to go, if we know how to generate sounds given words, we'll be able to get words given sounds. Uh, we also very quickly saw that base rule gives us a model for, th for cognition where in, in our heads we'll have many hypotheses. Um, we have hypotheses of say what an object might look like, like in this case sheep. Um, you get a label and then that label brings in information in the form of this distribution which we call the likelihood. So the terminology is you have a prior of a hypothesis the likelihood tells you what data goes with the hypothesis. So in this case, the, 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 the data is the label sheep that goes with this. And then based on that, you recompute by multiplying and normalizing. And the resulting distribution is called the posterior distribution. And in the next class, we'll see that there's a, it's possible to represent all this with graphs. And in fact, we'll be able to do very large graphs with thousands of variables. Not just two, but many variables. OK, so that was last class. So today we will finish these exercises and we'll introduce the concept of um, utility and the maximum expected utility. Now, who did the homework? What's the answer? Less than 1%. Less than 1%. Um, in particular, the exact answer is 0 0.098. 0 
Okay. Does that agree with my notes? Yes. Okay. So I'll ask again. Should you be worried? No. Unless you're like very, it's one percent probability still that you might have a very severe disease, which for some of us that one in a hundred is still uh, bad odds. But nonetheless, um, it doesn't look as bad. Now, this might seem like a sort of um, not natural situation. It's not often that you're in a position where you're given a test and so on. But it turns out that in our daily um, living, uh, we apply these rules all the time. Okay? So whether it's like, a, um, I don't know, like one partner asking the other one, do I look fat? And the other person saying no. Then there is a certain probability of that person telling the truth given that you're fat. But then you've got to look at the priors to be able to reach the right posterior as to whether you believe you're really fat or not. Um, and, and in fact, um, Josh Tenenbaum, and I'm going to write his name here because um, he is definitely worth um, Googling. Um, so he's one of my colleagues. He works at MIT, and he does a lot of work in machine learning. Um, but he's a psychologist, too. And so he's very interested in uh, um, relating Bayes, using Bayesian and probabilistic models to model cognition. And in fact, if you go to Google News anytime or whatever, and you Google Josh Tenenbaum, you'll see that he's actually very hot in the news all the time. Um, another good sort of popular, you know, person that's made it to popular science is um, Alison Gopnik. Uh, she has a very nice TED talk. And so I also recommend her TED talk uh, uh, for those of you interested in how Bayes' rule relates to actually our daily lives. And she, in fact, shows how babies, in fact, are doing uh, probabilistic reasoning. And, in fact, things a bit more advanced than what, uh, than just probabilistic reasoning, but also uh, doing um, experimentation and causality assessments. Um, so, the situation is not artificial. It's, it, base rule, to a large extent, um, dictates, at least in the cognitive psychology perspective, the way we humans behave, or the way we perceive, and so on. So, it's a very good model of cognition. Okay, so, let's go to problem number two, the Monty Hall problem. In the Monty Hall problem, okay, first of all, I have three doors. Okay, one has a prize, two have goats. Which door is the one that has uh, the prize? At first, all doors are the same, so the probability that the prize is behind any of the three doors is the same, in particular one third. So think of H here as your hypothesis about the world, and the hypothesis is where the price is. Okay? Either the price is behind door one, door two, or door three, and they all have equal probability. However, the contestant that is, well, us, we choose door one, and then the host opens door three. So we get an observation. We see that door three is our, that's our data. And this is the first time data sort of entering this course. And the datum that we get is that it's a goat behind door three. And so now the host asks us, do you want to switch to door two? Okay. Now, let's think about it. 